Trying to understand how to align the next star telescope can be confusing. The manual for the 5SE tells us that there are nine different ways to align it. Five of them are when you're in the out as configuration and another four when you're in the equatorial configuration. Most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to use the out as configuration. It's quicker and it's usually more convenient. So we'll just consider the alignment options for the out as configuration. The first one is something called sky align. I thought sky align, that's gonna be the best one. It's the first one in the manual and it's the only one that uses three stars. The other options use just one or two stars. My thinking was three stars will give us more accuracy, right? Well, from what I've read, Skyline only uses two of the three stars for alignment. It needs three stars so it can figure out what the stars are. Basically, we're being punished for not knowing the name of a star. The punishment is we have to do three stars, but we only get the accuracy of two stars. For this reason, I recommend using the auto two star align option. Occasionally, you might want to use the solar system align if you're in a really big hurry or in the daytime when you can only see the moon. I've actually seen Jupiter in the daytime when it was near the moon by doing a solar system align on the moon and then jogging over to look at Jupiter. To use the auto two star align, you really only need to know the name of one star. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, that one star can be Polaris. It's always in the same place in the sky. And that place is due north, x degrees above the horizon, where x is your latitude. So, for example, if you're in Chicago, the latitude there is 42 degrees. To find Polaris, you'd face due north and look up 42 degrees. Now, unlike the song, Polaris is not the brightest star in the sky but it is the brightest star in that part of the sky, so it's unlikely that you will mistake another star for Polaris. For optimal alignment accuracy, you wanna first make sure that your telescope is level. Just use the bubble level that comes with the scope. You also wanna make sure that the accurate site location information has been entered into the hand controller. The new Nexstar firmware no longer asks for this except for the very first time. To get it to ask you your location, just press the undo button when it asks you to enter the time. Obviously, having the wrong location will reduce your alignment accuracy. I also use an eyepiece that has crosshair reticles. The alignment procedure has us putting the star in the center of the eyepiece, and your accuracy will be improved if you use an eyepiece that has a reticle. Look in the more info section of this video for links to where you can buy one. Now we're ready to align the telescope. We turn it on and it says press enter to begin. Then it says to select the method. We're going to choose auto two star align. Be careful not to select the two star align. We want to make sure we see the words auto two star. Then it's going to ask for the time, the time zone, and the date. And then it asks for the first star. We only know one star so we're going to select Polaris. Following the instructions, it says to use the arrow buttons to put Polaris in the finder scope and press enter. Then it says to press the arrow buttons to put Polaris in the center of the eyepiece and press align. Now here's where the auto part comes into play. The hand controller has now automatically selected a second star. In this case, it's Vega. Pressing enter, and the telescope automatically slews to that second star. Now, if we've done everything correctly, it'll be obvious what the second star is because it'll be the only bright star near where the telescope ends up pointing. When we get to that second star, we again just follow the instructions on the hand controller. We push the arrow buttons until that second star is centered in the finder scope, press enter, and then we push the arrow buttons until that second star is centered in the eyepiece and we press align. And now we're aligned. One thing to remember is that anytime this telescope is automatically slewing to a sky target, you can abort by pressing any one of these four arrow keys. For example, if it turns out that the second star is behind a tree, you don't want to wait 
for the whole thing to finish, you just abort. And then in that case, you would press the undo button and select a different second star. After a while, you'll learn the names of a few stars, and that can be fun. Please see the more info section of this video to find links to related astronomy stuff.